As for me, in justice, I shall behold your face. I shall be filled with the vision of your glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we are yes, sins sins. Sins. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear the word of the Lord, princes of Sodom. Listen to the instruction of our God, people of Gomorrah. What care I for the number of your sacrifices, says the Lord. I have had enough of whole burnt rams and fat of fattings. In the blood of calves, lambs, and goats, I find no pleasure. When you come in to visit me, who asks these things of you? Trample my courts no more. Bring no more worthless offerings. Your incense is loathsome to me. New moon and Sabbath, calling off the assemblies, octaves with wickedness, these I cannot bear. Your new moons and festivals I detest. They weigh me down, I tire of the load. When you spread out your hands, I close my eyes to you. Though you pray the more, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves clean. Put away your misdeeds from before my eyes. Cease doing evil. Learn to do good. Make justice your aim. Redress the wrong. Hear the orphan's plea. Defend the widow. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Our response, our own son. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you, for your burnt offerings are before me always. I take from your home your house, no book, no goats out of your fold. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. Why do you recite my statutes and profess my covenant with your mouth? Though you hate discipline, and cast my words behind you. To the upright, I will show the same power of God. When do these things, sh shall I be deaf to it? Or do you think that I am like yourself? I will correct you by drawing them up before your eyes. He that offers praise as a sacrifice glorifies me. And to him that goes the right way, I will show the salvation of God. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his apostles, Do not think that I have come to bring peace upon the earth. I have come to bring not peace, but the sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's enemies will be those of his household. 
Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man because he is righteous will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink because he is a disciple, amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. When Jesus finished giving these commands to his twelve disciples, he went away from that place to teach and to preach in their towns. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I have come not to bring peace, but the sword. These are hard words from Jesus, hard to comprehend, because we often think of Jesus and we think of Christianity like that coexist bumper sticker that was so popular at one time. And as I was reflecting upon it this morning in my prayer, I remembered I had this. A letter opener. But a letter opener in the shape of a, a, one of those old knight swords. And as I thought about it, I said, okay, Lord, you want to bring the sword. How do I understand my faith in relation to a sword? And I thought about the three theological virtues. So I'll attempt to explain my understanding in relation to a sword via the three theological virtues. First, a sword consists of a blade. The blade of faith. Faith is a belief that God does exist. That there is a purpose. And that God is good and kind and loving. Because without it, why are we here? What are we doing? But we also need something to hold on to. We have a handle and a guard which protects us. The handle and guard can be the virtue of hope. Hope. Hope that the things that God has said, the promises of living a good life, receiving a reward in heaven, we hope that those things are real. And therefore, that inspires us, that hope, to continue to do what we do because we have faith that it is real. But yet, a sword is never really balanced. And if I could do it, I would be able to do it well. I don't think I can. Ah, look at there. It's balanced because of this, a pummel. A pummel provides that balance. That pummel is the virtue of love. It's the balance of faith and hope. Because when you think about it, if we say we're a Christian, but we don't have love in our hearts, love toward God, our neighbors, and ourselves, then all the rest of this is meaningless. We need that love to balance it. And the sword is effective because it's hard. It doesn't crack under pressure. Sometimes they might have a sword and you would Swing it, and it would, blade would break, or it might crack. So what hardens a sword? Fire and ice, cold and heat. They temper the material. What is that fire and ice in our lives? Joys and sufferings. We need to go through joys and sufferings to be able to harden our, our Christian faith. Now, we can't go through only joys, nor do we go through only sufferings, because they would not be able to provide us with a good, strong sword. But this sword, as you can see, it's dull. It's a paper. Oh. Paper cutter. But a real sword has to be strengthened and sharpened to be effective. 
has to be sharpened. What sharpens us? Living everything in every day of our life. Through all of the fire and the ice of life, we are sharpened by the way we live out the three theological virtues of faith, hope, and love. And I thought about all of this, and I said, you know, this is all so well and good. And I could take all the individual pieces myself today. I could take these pieces. I could take the fire. I could take the ice. Could I really put together a decent sword? No. No, not really. Because I don't have the hands of a true smith. And that true smith that puts all of this together in each of us is God. For we can go back in our lives and think about every day. And we can see the divine hand of that invisible smith. God directing, guiding, encouraging, leading. So that we can be an effective sword an effective faith life so that we can be that example to the world that desperately needs to see Christian men and women who are living, living the life of love to the best of their ability. May not be the, the best and most complete answer, but it's where I am at this stage in my life. I offer that to you to reflect upon. May Almighty God be with you. May He bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Coming together as one family in faith, we offer to God our prayers and our needs. We pray for our Holy Father, for Archbishop, for all priests, religious brothers, sisters, permanent deacons, and seminarians. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. Lord. We pray for those who are sick or suffering in any way this day. We remember those in hospitals, nursing homes, the homebound, the homeless, and all those who care for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for the needs of our brothers and sisters who will watch this Mass on video, and for the needs of you here present in our church chapel today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. And finally, we pray that the infinite Prague will continue to watch over the finances of our parishes. May we always have enough of what we need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Offering all our prayers to the Father, let us conclude with a prayer of praise in honor of the Blessed Trinity. Glory, Glory be to, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work with human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be thy Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice with your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for all the good and good of all of the church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to us. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory. As with one voice we acclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. So we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of your Lord, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Your spirit. Lamb of God, you take the rage of the world, have mercy on us. 
Mary, O God, we take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Mary, O God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us at peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Glory to God, and glory to the Lord, 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 and glory to the Lord. The sparrow finds a home, and the swallow nests for her young. By your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are they who dwell in your house, forever singing your praise. Let us pray. <clears throat> Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Prayer to St. Michael. <clears throat> Holy Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the weakness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power, thrust into hell, saying to all the evil spirits who wander through this world, seeking the ruin of the souls. Amen. The divine praise of protection against storms, hurricanes, and other disasters. Blessed be God, blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus, the most holy sacrament the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Consoler. Blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God, his angels and his saints.